Yep, you'll start the recording. Thank you. Um, David's got his flag, so we can do the pledge. So if everybody will join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so public input. We don't have any public. So we'll go right past that correspondence, everything we have for correspondence. There's nothing new, Kathy, right? Nope. So approval of meeting minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from our regular meeting of July 13, 2022. Second. Second Bob seconds. Uh, do we have any discussion or any changes that need to be made? Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? And does anybody need to abstain? Dave Olson needs to abstain. Okay. Oh, I think I do too. Yes, Bob wasn't here yeah. last time either, so Bob abstains. Okay, so um, getting into our um, old business for the Rockwell and Johnson schools. Um, I see Jen is on with us tonight. I think this is Jen's first meeting, right? Yes, yes, so welcome. Yes, that's correct, thank you. Yes, so this is Jen's first meeting. Jen is um, now our new uh, Director of Finance and Business Operations, et cetera, et cetera, whatever for the schools as Terry has um, retired and sad to see Terry go, but retirement's a good thing. Um, hopefully all of us will get there someday. <laughs> so welcome Jen and you'll kind of get used to how things go and what you're gonna need to do, do for us. Um, I don't know if you have any input right now or if you just wanna say hi. Yep, you're good. No, nope. <laughs> I'm good. All right, great. Okay, so getting into things um, for our school projects. Geraldine, do you want to say anything or are you going later? You're muted. Yeah, I might as well start it off right now since you were mentioning retirement. Um, so um, not a surprise to Nancy because I've been chatting with her about it, but I've waited this long to announce it to the rest of the building committee, but I am also retiring and my last day at STV is August 5th. So this will be my last meeting with you. And on this call, um, hopefully Vinny can turn on his camera. Um, on this call, I have um, Vin Salinas who, there he is, who um, is a recent hire at STV, um, another extremely competent, personable senior project manager who will be transitioning onto, or who has transitioned onto um, certainly the firehouse, uh, I mean, the firing range, um, kind of hoping that the schools have been wrapped up by now, but they're not. So Vinny will also be um, taking over kind of the final negotiations on, on issues that are arising on those projects. Um, so that, that's, so here we are, and there we go. So <laughs> welcome, welcome, Vin, and we're going to stalk Gerald, and we're not going to let her go. <laughs> yeah. I'm you know, I'm not actually moving out of state until October, so I intend to, you know, informally hang around and obviously, you know, continue to help with the transition, answer all the questions that I can. And obviously, much like Terry, even after we go, we don't actually really go because we're professionals and we'll continue to, to uh, you know, participate where we're needed. So, congratulations. So, Gerilyn, if we could, if we could clarify just so that I'm on the right page with all of this and, and Jen yep. is on the right page. So um, we are bitter close to doing final filings with the state. We just really need Sunburst to do, to do the work that they are scheduled to do and to pay those bills. And then we could file. Are you available for that? Well, certainly, yeah. And um, I've, I've had a couple of chats with Barbara at the state as well. She knows that I'm 
you know, sort of officially leaving, but she also knows that the paperwork they have today is everything that they're going to get until we file that final um, application for the, for the, you know, remaining reimbursement. Um, and yes, I will definitely be available um, through that process through the fall to answer any questions. And talk okay. About that. Because that was my sort of promise right. also was to be there through that final filing because when it comes time to audit or whatever, that'll go through the town uh, finance department, um, of course, with Jen's support, but um, but at, we are bitter close to it. So um, like to see yep. us wrap that up. Absolutely. Okay. So welcome, Vinny. Thank you. And um, you'll maybe get to meet some of us at some point, but since we're sometimes remote and sometimes in person, you'll just have to, you know, check each time Kathy sends a, um, a an announcement out, whether at, whether we're in person or whether we're hybrid. Um, and if we're hybrid, you're always welcome to join <clears throat> through Zoom. And yeah. congratulations, Geraldine. <laughs> Like I said, I think who's a, who's retired on here? Dave Olson's retired. <laughs> the rest of us are still working. I'm right? retired, but I'd just like <laughs> to say that that in my opinion, you've done a remarkably good job for us, Sherilyn. We will miss you. And Vinny, you've got huge, huge shoes to fill. Not that Sherilyn <laughs> has big feet, but her shoes are really big. <laughs> I've already been done a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank Thanks, you, Dave. Dave. Um, going to miss working with all of you. I mean, it's been a long relationship and it's probably the hardest one that I have to make this announcement to in terms of clients. And again, I'm, I'm disappointed that we didn't at least get closure on the school, but, um, but I'm certainly going to be tracking those projects. Completion, so. yep. Good. Okay. Um, no, no other surprises for tonight, I don't think. Um, I, we'll I have one question. <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, I received a call from Richie Straten. I'm not sure if he's on tonight, but he uh, left a message about a missing guide rail um, at Johnson. I, I'm not sure what he was talking about. Do you? Okay. Yeah, because I took a ride up there today and, you know, whatever was taken down during the project is back up. And, um, you, you know, the, the parking lots look fine. Um, I don't see anything missing there. So I'm not sure really what he was talking about. Well, you might have to get more info from him to see if. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, thought, I thought maybe you knew. That's fine. Okay. All right, very yeah, good. we haven't we haven't gotten any um, anything anything from him either a phone call or communication through email from him. So I need to check directly with him. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. So we do have some bullets under. So close out update. Ken, I don't know if you have anything specific for us. But Sunburst uh, confirmed that they're going to have a tentative start of August 22nd for going around and, and doing the uh, adding topsoil and reseeding where they need to. Ken, when would they be finishing? And, and to the point where we uh, actual invoices would be submitted to the committee. So the, um, the work is probably going to take two weeks. The, uh, the grass to be accepted is, I guess, dependent on, you know, the, the weather and, and um, how fast it grows come September. It's, it's a pretty good time of the year, so it could be early October. Well, so hey, Hey, Ken, you're going to have to let them know that that timeline that they're talking about, that's that's going to start the busy season for us. That's when staff starts to show up. So they need to know that. There'll be there'll be a lot of traffic around that area. Oh, yeah, they know that. Yep. All right. So, and what's the, Bob, so what's the first day of school? Um, the 29th. I'm not, 29th? Jen, is that the 29th? I think that's the that's, 29th, but yeah. teachers come in the week before uh, to do professional learning. So the 29th is the first day with students, but the building, the entire week before that, the building is occupied by teachers. And um, I forget when freshman orientation is, but I can look that up. 
Yeah, I think it's the same week. And uh, that's the, all the teachers will be in uh, through that week setting their rooms up. So it's just that at the parking lots that the landscapers need to know the parking lots will be filled. So I think, Ken, um, what, what we had talked about with with Sunburst and, um, and also in meetings was that the initial, um, any sort of like heavy, I don't know if you want to call it heavy lifting or heavy equipment that needs to come in to either do any of the work or bring in soil, et cetera, has to happen as quickly as possible. If they're going to, if they could start a little earlier, you know, probably. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing they'll be doing on 22nd. Uh, it, provided he starts that day, but he's going to be bringing in the topsoil and dressing up all the areas and then seeding. So it, 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 he should be in and out of there before you know it. Okay. And even if he wanted to start a little bit the week before um, that middle week of August, um, that would be great. Um, if he, uh, we would really push. He, he doesn't want to start the 22nd because <laughs> the grass is better if it's seeded later in the year, but that's what he committed to. So I understand. That's what we're going to keep him at. Yeah. And, then and how will the drought conditions uh, affect this? I mean, um, yeah, starting too soon could be an issue or is he going to be okay? So even starting with the 22nd, we're going to have to water it. So yeah, it's just going to have to be watered after he plants. And who will be doing that watering? I think it, yeah, Rizzo's going to supplement and help water. Okay. And you will keep um, in touch with somebody, whether it needs to be Bob or uh, Dr. Carver or both, with um, any updates on the start date as soon as you know. Yes. Okay. Um, so something that came up kind of after we put the agenda together, but it's part of our closeout. Um, I had mentioned at our last meeting that we received a letter from the Park and Rec Commission and Eileen Earl, Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, the letter was dated June 29 and I actually received it on June 29, which was the day that we had a special meeting, but we couldn't get into discussing it because it was just brought up you know, that afternoon to me. So we weren't able to distribute the letter or uh, do any discussion. So we did, I did forward all that information to Gerilyn and to Bob Germanaro. Um, Gerilyn passed it on to Rick Eastman. And then we did discuss it um, uh, at our meeting on July 13th, because after some Gerilyn passing the info on to Perkins Eastman and then at, uh, also asking Eileen for uh, more details um, some information, more information was gathered. And I went up there before our meeting on the 13th, took a walk around. And as I had reported to everyone, there had not been any rain and probably who knows how long. It was very dry. I could see the washout. I could see what they were talking about had occurred, but had that been happening all along? Had it been recent? Um, well, it wasn't recent, at least in the month before that, since we didn't have much in the rain. So some back and forth talking between Perkins Eastman and SLR. Um, SLR set up a time to go out and meet at the site to take a look at things. And Joe Collada agreed to join. I hadn't, I didn't, I wasn't part of that discussion, so I didn't know about the meeting. However, it was fortuitous because the meeting was set up for J July 19, and we had heavy rain on July 18. So when they got out there, they got to see um, exactly what was happening that was creating the washout. So um, the SLR sent a report along with some pictures and videos and the whole file was too large to be able to email it. And um, Geraldine posted it on the shared drive. So I hope you got a chance to look at it. And I don't know if you want to show any of it. Yeah, do you want me to share it? Because um, it, since it was a PowerPoint presentation, some folks might not have been able to. Um, yeah, maybe we should go through it. it. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, there was there was also a, a PDF of it. Yeah, but with the PDF, yeah, you can't. The PDF can't. wasn't, wasn't uh, the videos didn't work anymore. Right. 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 Let's see. 
So, <clears throat> let's see. So the report, well, you're going to miss some of it because of the overlay of the screen. The report describes the issue. Here's the area that they were looking at. It's the, the pink hatched area includes the retention pond and then where the arrow is pointing, obviously, is where the discharge issue is. And then the, the problems with the runoff are kind of past that, past the project site downhill from there. Um, so as Nancy said, they were there where water was running down the path. See, and in these series of videos, um, that's just a still picture. This one is behind some some things. Let's see. How do I need to move on? I think I think the middle one was a video too. Yeah. Um, Here's where the one of the issue. Here's where the issue is, right? It's that um, discharge goes into this riprap. Yeah, it's the level spreader. The level spreader. That's what it is, and then floats downstream. Right, and it and it's breaking through at the end where the guy in the orange shirt is, and then right in front of him underneath the curb. And this is that is the I think it's a catch runoff. basin. Yeah, that's in the um, retention pond itself. Right, and then that's what that's what flows out there and discharges into this level spreader. Correct. So, um, so do you want to describe what the what the observation or the conclusion was from SLR, where the, why this is happening and where the issues are, or why we have this issue? So it, it, it appears, I think if you go down to the next slide, there's a, a description of it. So this, that's the um, detail eight. I think it's, I forget what the sheet number is. Um, it's on the detail sheet, um, shows the, uh, a section through the level spreader, a uh, cross section. And after the curve, there is um, a, a berm or a seeded area. So what, what's meant to happen is the level spreader fills. Once it overtops the top of the curve, then it um, should occur all the way along the length of the curve and then flows over the seeded uh, topsoil and seed slope and, and is distributed into the landscape. Um, it appears that this slope is not present um, in the field. I'm not sure if, um, if it was installed or as, as I was talking to Rizzo today, the Earth Movers is um, indicating that the berm was washed away, but it doesn't seem to be any indication that it was there or seeded, um, at least in the current existing conditions. Um, and then there's also a weak spot you could see in the blue on the right hand side of the screen um, where the water is breaking through at the, the end of the curb that's at the, the north end where there's a very little rock area and there's no uh, earth there as, as well. I think the next slide, there's an, another. Um, so you could see here, this is about the middle, uh, about a third of the way down, going back towards the pipe where the, the berm is completely missing um, and that the water is actually flowing through the, the rocks underneath the curb. And that's where the, the major point of water is, is escaping um, in a concentrated amount. And then they have in the blue on the right again, it's, it's just a, that's a remediation for the trail that they, uh, uh, an example of a water bar it helps control the water going across the trail. That would be a further remediation. 
Is that the last slide or is there another one? Because I think they There's talk about one more. Nope. Nope. That was it. Okay. Yeah. So so my observations were um, that the and I went up there again today. A nice long walk. It's um, relatively dry again, but you can see. So if you go back to the, I don't know, I guess the number four, maybe. Um, so you see, and then the, I don't know if that zooms any, um, where you see yeah. the, um, yeah. So I, I had questions, which I asked of Joe Collada, who forwarded them to SLR and um, the biggest question I think that probably we would all have is, is the stormwater area, not just the area that we see where the level spreader is, but is the storm water area, um, uh, because there were no photographs of the actual big sort of ponds type area. Is it functioning? Is it all functioning um, as, as designed and as it is supposed to? Um, when we were there on the 19th, it appeared that it was. Um, the southern portion of it was um, filling with water, and, and it seemed like it was overflowing. Uh, there's a, another gravel berm that's built into that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's supposed to fill that up and overflow the berm and, and spills into the more northern portion where the, mm -hmm. um, the drain is. Okay. Um, so then there's, a, there's an under drain that is... Uh, intended to collect the water and then bring it out to the level spreader. And then that is intended to fill and then um, spread out along its length. So the washout is actually happening <clears throat> at the very end of the level spreader. Correct. Um, so is it, um, is the, that end of the level spreader supposed to be at a little higher elevation so that it doesn't go gushing out there or is it uh, well, the level the level spreader is, in, is supposed to be uh, level, for lack of a better description of its name. Um, so it's supposed to fill, and then once it fills, if, uh, generally, if you go down a slide or two, I think there's a picture of it. Um, yeah, it's, you can see it really quickly here. Yes. So you can see how, uh, how the, it's level, like, and it, so it's, it's intended to fill up to the top of the curb and then spill over the curb and then enter the berm with the grass berm and, and dissipate into the landscape. So what's happening is right at where the uh, guy in the yellow shirt is, there's a couple of breakthrough spots that's letting the water out in, in a concentrated load. And that's what's it's basically forming its own little stream at that point. Because where the guy in the orange shirt is, is the, the end kind of of the whole yeah, system, so to speak. Yeah, it's right about where yes. that joint right. is, yes. And, and right where Geraldine's cursor is kind of making little circles. Right. And that's yeah. where the washout is. You can't see the washout standing on top of the level, level spreader, but a little bit down hill from it. I mean, it's a pretty steep hill, too. And, and so what's what you see on the, on the drawing there of East Swamp Brook, and then where the stormwater area is, um, there's it slopes off, and then some places it slopes off very steeply, some some places not so steeply, but along so parallel to the whole retention stormwater area, whatever you want to call it, stormwater area, and between that and the East Swamp Brook is a trail called the Enchanted Trail, that's um, was put together and, and is now maintained by um, the Bethel Land Trust and Park and Rec together. Um, so it is used. I when I went down there a couple of weeks ago, I saw people hiking on it. A young couple with the kid and some other people were hiking. And so it is used. And now Park and Rec, the reason they discovered it was they set up a whole disc golf area around the whole school um, complex. And there's one of the tees for the disc golf. Um, sort of leads down into the Enchanted Trail and walking along it, you see the washout. And to me, in watching the video of how quickly the water comes into the um, outlet control structure, that big concrete box that's with the green pipe coming out, is it supposed to flow into that so quickly? Um, when we were 
out in the field, uh, SLR seemed to indicate that that um, wasn't actually that quick. <laughs> oh, so it would be quicker. So it comes in and up like a four inch, it looks like a four inch or six inch pipe, but then it goes out into that larger pipe, which goes down to the that flared structure thing there that goes out into the level spreader. Correct. But we also have to think about, and I'm, I'm sure SLR took this into consideration. It wasn't one of the questions I asked them um, last or over the weekend um, that, that I got some answers to questions I asked. But in the one video that Geraldine was just showing, you see right now, just looking at the still picture is kind of what I would consider upstream from, see the little concrete thing in the corner of the picture. And upstream from there is, I mean, if you saw the whole map, which I showed um, at the last meeting, there's a whole section where it may have been part of what was existing, but there's a lot of water that dumps into there from a lot of other places, not just Johnson School. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then there's the riprap berm and it overflows the riprap berm into another which is what you're seeing kind of in that, um, I keep pointing to it, but you can't see me pointing to it, um, into the section you see right now. It's all well, um, you know, it's got all kinds of stuff growing in there, which is great because, yeah, so if we so go to the second of, plant, yeah. so that there's the area that you're like right where your cursor is now, Gerilyn, that's, there's three different, um, I don't, there's some sort of pipes coming in there. It says INV and it has a, um, I'm looking at the thing that I printed. It has an elevation. And a lot of that comes from up at the middle school and other schools. And then there's another pipe that you see as a dotted line. It's down further, Gerilyn, down to where those INV things are. There's a level, so there's actually a, no, down, uh, yeah. which direction do we, yeah. So south and you know, to the, your left. And, and to the and left. left. So, so that's the, the three, yeah, right that there. That's a flared, uh, another flared end section coming from, because you see a pipe leading out towards other right. parts of the school complexes. And then I guess that all fills up and then, over, and then there's another flared end section right up near the riprap berm. So more water coming in from different areas of the school. And then it goes over the riprap berm, goes into the, the next section where it hits that concrete box uh, outlet control structure, learning more about site work than I probably ever needed to know mm -hmm. in the <laughs> um, and from the outlet control structure, it goes down that pipe. It doesn't go underground. I mean, the pipe's underground, but it doesn't just kind of, so I guess some of it goes into the ground and then some of it goes down the pipe to the, so the, I guess the biggest control part of it is that flared or the um, level spreader. Yeah, it's so done, that's, yeah. that's supposed to dissipate the water when it is leaving the retention pond. So it's supposed to dissipate over the entire surface of the edge of the curbing of the yeah. level spreader. Correct. And what you were observing is it was all coming out one one area, which was creating the washout. Yeah, one one main spot, and then a little bit at the very north end of it, where there was. Okay. Um, seems like there's could be some more of uh, the riprap installed. So. And more and so, and, and the dirt. Okay. And so what's the, how do we, how do we fix this? Um, well, it would need to meet the detail. So there's a, there's the berm and you can yep. see it, it's sloped and it's supposed yep. to meet down to the uh, slope down from the um, curb and then Great. pick up the grade. And it's supposed mm -hmm. to be um, topsoil and seed slope. Um, and then to it indicate it's to provide a temporary inversion control blanket to help stabilize the vegetation. But there's still, there still seems to me, even with that berm coming off from the curb and that whole red area that, that's in the uh, photograph, even with that, there still seems to be an area, um, is, is be, because the berm's not there, it's not overflowing the curb and so it's going way down the end and flowing out is that what yeah curve? so it's flowing out underneath the curb through the rip wrap so if because, I, I wish i could control I, like i could point <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> i know I, yeah i think i understand what you mean so where the guy's foot is you see that the how low 
that curb is what? How how tall is that? Probably maybe. Um, it's a. I think it's a twelve inch curb. Uh, so it's coming out from under there. You saw it coming out from under there. Right. So you could kind of see the level of the water in the level spreader. Yes. It's finding its natural level there and coming out right below the curb on on the opposite side of the curb, and part probably be partially through that uh, joint there. Looks like nothing a little flex seal can't fix. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, so that there would need to be soil built up. Yes. Yeah, so it, it should slope down from the top of the curb. Um, I think the um, slope is two to one. And then pick up the grade at the toe of that. So is the dirt actually missing? Was it not there? Like installed or did it wash away do we know because it looks like it's bare where i mean again i'm pointing to where the yeah. red area you just showed that <laughs> there's, there's soil there but um down at the end it appears that the soil is pretty much at the base like you say where it's leaking out right so the soil there is soil all the way along but it's too low right so, it, so at, at, at the in this photo like where Geraldine's cursor is right now there is soil there but it's not high enough Right. Right. It's not so high enough is, and it doesn't mm, appear to slope either. Right. So, right. Does, so was it's, it not it's, done properly or was it just maybe it the email away? that I sent over to you, Gerilyn, this afternoon? Do you have that picture that was attached to it? Because uh, that, that one there shows the flared outlet. The, the flared outlet is at, six, at uh, 45 degrees to the curb. So, at a high flow, Earth Movers believes that the washout occurred because the water was coming out of the uh, flared outlet right over the curb. And it, it, you know, even if that level spreader was filled up, if, if it was a heavy rain, there wasn't anything stopping it from going straight. If it's a, if, if that's a 30 inch pipe mm -hmm. and it's, it's got water flowing out of it, you're, you're not making it turn right there. And you can see the, the fill to the left right there. It's up to the top of the curb. And uh, Earth Movers is maintaining that they filled that whole berm and it washed out. And he says, you fill it up again. It's going to happen again. It, it's it's uh, probably a lot of water going into a level spreader that should be a little bit longer. That, if you remember the size of the original detention basin was uh, 17,000 square feet. The new one is 13,000 square feet. You're adding more than 58,000 square feet of runoff behind the new addition and in front of the new addition. So you're, you're not only made it smaller, you made, you made more water. Yes, you increased the pipe to 30 inches, but that means you have more volume coming out. The old detention basin had a 12 inch line coming out, but there it was like a swamp. There were trees everywhere and, and it was probably acting as its own level spreader by going everywhere. Not like this is concentrated. So that's, that's what they're saying. And they suggest that we meet out there during a heavy rain and take a look at it. So and look picture, you can see the little far left of the picture, the, the soil is up pretty much up to the curb, not growing anything, but it's up to the curb. But I kind of see what Ken is saying, where if it's coming out of that um, flared end section there and going directly towards mm -hmm. the, um, and that is a short distance, I can confirm uh, having been up there a couple of times, if it's coming gushing out of that flared end section right towards the curb and not being more directed into the level spreader. Um, and I understand, I, Ken, you're saying basically that it's going to be a problem again, even if the soil is built back up there. I think it well, would, you know, with, but without looking at it, I don't know for sure. OK. I, you, I think there's, there's a, a video of, of the water coming out of it in, in the SLR presentation. That was and a it, low and flow. It, doesn't, it doesn't shoot out all the way across. Can I ask a question? Sure, Is, uh, Bob. You think it'd uh, be logical to maybe temporarily sandbag that area so we don't have any more erosion until we come up with a solution? 
And I was going to say sandbag to the, so it faces it up to the left, yeah. As yeah. You, or the right as you face it. That was so my it thought. You can't go to the right. I was going to say the same thing, Bob, kind of a diverter to push it down instead of let it go across. Yeah, this way here, there's no more erosion to the land. And, mm -hmm. and also, is that town property that's uh, getting eroded down there, or is that somebody's privately area? So if, if the Enchanted Trail is on it, I'm assuming it's either land trust or town property that's down further. Okay. But I can't. And I know, at, so on the other side of the East Swamp Brook, going away from the school property, there's whatever road is there. Is that Taylor? That's Taylor Road. And there's yeah. properties that go right up to the water edge. So Right, mm -hmm. up to the edge of the brook, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, it probably would be good to do some more investigating before we start trying to dig holes and do. I mean, I'm I'm assuming that maybe I should ask it more like a question. So, um, in saying that the the whole stormwater basin was smaller than it used to be, um, that's partly because of the Johnson addition. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah, they they actually filled in a lot of the uh, existing basin. So was the, ba was the basin made deeper to accommodate or was it just? The inverts uh, looked pretty close to the same. Uh, okay. The, uh, the inverts going out and they weren't that much different. Because I can see, I'm actually looking at, I printed the site plan that Joe Collada that section of the site plan that Joe Collada sent. And so then is the, so the inverts are in the same place that they were, but if we're looking at the area that's closest to Johnson, um, was there another um, flared, big flared section installed there coming down from something that's somewhere up near Johnson, maybe a catch basin or yeah, I don't know if you can make that bigger, Geraldine. I, I can't because it's a slide embedded. Oh, in it's a slide. So let me see if I can find. Um, well, maybe we just don't need to. Go. So it's an issue. It's going to continue to be an issue. We have to do some kind of remediation. But as far as exactly, I mean, SLR did provide what they thought would work. But I, I kind of think that, you know, Ken's point of the sort of location and angle of the flared end section there could continue to be an issue if you fill the soil up there and if you get some, obviously if some grass or other things were growing there and holding it in place, then it wouldn't be as much of an issue. However, that would be a maybe. So um, Ken, you're looking at trying to put together something like going up there when it's pouring rain. It seems to be it's always raining when we all go up there, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be the, the way to look at it when it's at high flow, to, to mm -hmm. it's, if it's uh, how fast it comes out of that. Um, there, I mean, you wouldn't have used the 30 inch pipe unless you needed it. Right, and that was what was designed. So I'm sure they thought that it would be needed. And I had asked some questions of SLR. They got back to me on them, and I gotta see if I can find them. I think it. I mean, I am. Um, see if I have. Where is that? Because you um. Uh, I I, know you, the, I printed that. Put it on. Put it on. Yeah, you put it on the shared drive, and I thought I printed it so I could use it tonight, but. I could see if I can find it. Here it is. I think most of the questions I asked were answered by SLR, and I think I brought up, um, you know, mostly I was asking, is it supposed to be coming out so rapidly? Well, yeah, you got, got to get rid of it somehow. I asked if there were issues further upstream from 
the structures, like the um, concrete box control, control structure, and they said they didn't think so. And Joe, you verified that there's, it's not like there's a whole lot of water standing there. It's so, some of the water gets dispersed into the ground, obviously, because there's right. a great meadow flowing, you know, growing there, and that stuff's getting a lot of water. Um, and so their conclusion is that the detention pond and the, um, the concrete box are working as anticipated. If the level spreader is fixed, the work is designed. Yeah. They believe that the runoff issues on the trail will significantly improve. If not, then it would be a whole other not connected to the project um, thing that might need to happen uh, along the trail. It is, like I said, it's pretty steep in some areas. So there yeah, are I some they, other- Sorry to interrupt, Nancy. I think they said okay. the, the runoff issues on the trail would significantly improve, if not be completely resolved, if right. the okay. level spreader is repaired. Okay. They worded that a little funny. Right. And, and Ken, you're thinking you want to take a look at it first before jumping into doing it, because you might have some other ideas um, of what might need to be done. I think it would be worth looking at it during high flow to see if it's containing the water. Yeah, OK. OK, so can you organize that? Yes. And, and who would you want to be there? Uh, it would be nice to have STV there. Earth Movers, um, SLR, and um, uh, Perkins Eastman. And then yourself, if you'd like to be there. OK. So, so Ken, Darren Overton is the um, senior civil engineer for the project. He's out of the office until August 5th. So I would like him to attend this meeting. Sure. Well, we have to watch the weather and figure out what's a good day to, you know, right. actually yeah. view it. But if it pours rain, you know, in three days, Darren's not going to be around to see it. So I think what Joe's saying is that he wants it to happen sometime when Darren's going to be available. That would be preferred. Um, yeah. I could, we okay. could take video. Um, We're going to set Deer Hunter camera. <laughs> <laughs> Because my assumption is, um, my assumption is some, you know, if it's just bringing soil in, et cetera, that could possibly be done with smaller equipment. But if we have to get larger equipment in there, that's going to be a whole other thing that's going to have to get figured out. Um, but I think that if we have all those people there, um, you know, and, and from experience of, you know, earth movers can and STV, et cetera, everybody looking at it and knowing that, yeah, you can draw a whole bunch of things on a piece of paper, but you don't always know if it's gonna uh, perform as drawn. So um, getting a good view of it, I think would be helpful. Can so you... um, the, the, Bob's idea of putting some sandbags in place, I, is that what you were gonna ask about, Bob? Well, no, I was just, yeah, the, definitely with the sandbags, I think that will help, you know, further erosion. But do you, um, do you want a firehouse tanker to fill it up? We can simulate the pond filling up. Just mm -hmm. put here, we're not waiting for the weather. I just, uh, happened, sure. to know, I just happened to know a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a couple of them on the meeting tonight. <laughs> um, has that been done before? Is it, I mean, I know they use that sometimes to check where there's low, low spots in parking lots and on tennis courts. Right. Like I mean, it's, it's um, town property, so it's, it's you know, yeah. I'm sure that won't be a problem. I, you know, I'll definitely run it through the chief, but I'm sure okay. that won't be a problem. And plus, it helps flush our tanker. <laughs> how many, how many, how many tankers full do you think you'll need to get it going? Well, I, I don't know. I probably two. Yeah. And so I would think that, I don't know if you want to put it up at the far end or whether you're just going to put it near that concrete structure and see if it starts going down that way. You want to see what's going on. We, have, we have plenty of hose. <laughs> I, I know, but I just, I don't know whether you need to verify further upstream as to whether that's working well or not, or whether you need to just go closer to the 
concrete box, whatever it's called, the outlet control structure. That's for people smarter than me. I know that I, I could uh, I could question. ask I could ask SLR that question. Okay, that would be good. You know, I would they just, need to I would just need what, a day's notice. A natural condition, right? So, um, yeah, let's ask SLR. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's check with SLR, and we'll go from there. Um, so, but then back to Bob's point of would it be helpful to put some sandbags in place? Would it? Anybody got any? I I would think that would make sense to um, as a temporary stopgap. Would you put them along the curb where the soil is missing, or would you put them kind of adjacent to that the level or the uh, the big black thing, the flared end section? Uh, um, I could ask SLR that as well, but I would assume okay. where the dirt is missing at a minimum. Yep. Um, okay, so if you find that out, let us know, and then who's going to do it? I've made little sandbags. I've never made big ones. So who's going to do it? John Perna raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to figure that out. All right. Mm -hmm. Call the Army Corps gonna... of Engineers. They'll help us. OK. We'll have it be a um, an exercise for the fire department just in case they ever need to, you know. Oh, yeah. Sure. There we go. That's it. Yeah. We'll ask them to borrow their truck and ask them to make sandbags. All how right. So Beth, we'll how about the Bethel NGROTC program? You got a lot of kids there, strong backs and weak minds. There you go. <laughs> a community service project. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. There Everyone you go. Full I'll, get, I'll get my right. daughter on it. I'll get my kids on it tonight. <laughs> All right. So we have a bunch of different um, possibilities of who's going to do the sandbags, but we'll have to figure that out once we get something from SLR about both where the sandbags should be placed and what should what we should do about um, using the tanker truck and where that water should be directed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of one of the, the biggest outstanding thing other than the um, landscaping that needs to be done. Um, I have a question, which I was going through some old notes and I'm sure I'm surprised John Perna has brought this up before. I know, Bob, we had gotten all the paperwork and stuff together for you to deal with the roof warranties and did that all get resolved and we're done with it? I believe so. We uh, okay. we have the, the book with all the warranties in it. Okay, good. And uh, right. so we wouldn't have gotten that if that uh, we didn't have resolutions. Right, good. Okay, that's good to know. I wanted to make sure. And not kind of wood, no leaks, so. No leaks, yay. All right. Um, so should we look at the budget? Yeah, the budget actually is unchanged from um, you know, last time. So, but we certainly can look at the combined um, tabulation of where the where where the contingencies lie and things like that. So again, literally the, the top part is unchanged. I'm still carrying a note here on the um, remaining Rizzo PCO for that $55,000 scope reduction recapture. Um, but with the current uh, balances negative and positive in the owner contingency and the remaining CM contingency, um, we're still projecting $778,000 under budget. OK. Any questions for Geraldine on this? I think we're good. And the tracking budgets, we don't need to do much with those, right? They're, they're literally the unchanged because they won't change again until we approve invoices today. And then all we're doing is in, increasing not the contract amounts, but the um, invoiced amounts uh, against contract. So really okay. nothing, to, nothing to there. So next would be invoices, but does anybody have any questions or on any parts of the project for anybody that's here before we jump into invoices. Are we resolved with the door and the lock and everything? Is that all yep. done? Yep. 
complete 100 percent yep no. and we they are done because we do have invoices um I see invoices um with about both the electric and the uh, hardware so yeah. that was all finished uh being purchased and finished being installed yeah Anything else? So shall we approve some invoices? So shall we do um, let's start with those? Yeah. Yeah, start with the doors. Yeah. So um, I'll make the motion and then we can talk about it. So I'll make a motion that we approve the invoice number uh, 213 from Ed. Kijak, is that how you say his last name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, for the hardware and installation, uh, well, the, the, in, the hardware itself, the installation was um, part of his part original. Of you. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Um, so approve the invoice for $1,813. Second. Got a second from, I think it was Dave Olson. So my question is, um, I think in his original proposal, there was the doors and his installation, and then there was an additional possible 1500 for hardware. And so is this above that, or is this 1500 plus a couple hundred because there wasn't enough attic stock? That's yeah. my understanding. Is this is the actual hardware that had to be procured because um, it turned out that there was not the correct um, attic stock of hardware in order to complete this work. Is that right, Bob? That's correct. So we're originally okay. So there, his original quote included an allowance. This is the actual purchase of that additional hardware that was needed, and it is slightly okay. higher than the original. Right. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Good. Um, that one's done. So then the next one, Lucido. This is the electrical for that area that had to be done um, for the hold opens and things like that. So I'll make a motion okay. that we we approve the invoice number one zero nine eight zero nine from Lucido um, in the amount of nine hundred and five dollars and ten cents. Okay. Second from Dave Olson. Any questions on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done with that one. So now we have whatever we want to do next. Pick one. Just keep going Perkins down. The list. Perkins well, East. Yeah. And uh, this one's for Johnson. So I'll make a motion yeah. that we approve Perkins Eastman invoice number 68962.07.0-16 for Johnson School in the amount of $5,300.01. Second. Second from Dave Olson. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Done. Another Perkins Eastman. Make a motion that we approve Perkins Eastman invoice number 68961.06.0-16 for Rockwell School in the amount of $1,533. Anybody want a second? I'll second it. All right, got a second from Bob. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, done. And those were both, uh, the Perkins Eastman were both for the month of June. And then we have STV for school, Johnson. Make a motion that yep. we approve the STV invoice number 9002511 um, for Johnson School. And again, this is for the month of June in the amount of $1,638. Second. Second from Dave Olson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. And one more. 
uh, make a motion that we approve the STB invoice number 9002511313 uh, for Rockwell School in the amount of $1,820. Somebody second it. Second. Hello? Second. Second. All right. All right. I just didn't hear. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Okay. And done. that's done for invoices. Thank you, Gerilyn. Um, I think that's it tonight for school stuff. So school folks, unless anybody has any other questions for either Jen or Bob or Geraldine on school stuff or, or Ken or Joe Collada. Um, I have a question. Uh, yes. I saw some emails about some issues with chairs at Johnson School. Has that been resolved? Okay. So we, read, we did get another, um, a couple of weeks ago, another email from Red Thread, the company that um, furniture was purchased through saying, please pay our invoice. And I sent it to Gerilyn. Of course, we found out that Gerilyn hasn't been getting my emails for a month. So. A month. <laughs> and I haven't heard, been here. I've been, haven't been hearing back from her. So I thought she didn't like me anymore. Um, but <laughs> we, we finally um, got to check into it and, and the correct stuff hasn't been delivered yet. Right, Gerilyn? Is that Correct. And now I have Red Thread is checking on what the delivery time is on replacing the chairs. So all of those chairs that have four legs are going to go, and they're going to those 40 chairs need to be re-delivered with a sled base to match the chairs that are already in the building. So they don't have a delivery date yet for that. Um, so so that's in the works. The second okay. part of that problem, second part of that invoice is or, well, or the second part of the invoice were deaths. We also ordered 40 additional desks, as you all re will recall. Um, we did not order desks with book boxes underneath. They just sent plain old table desks. So the question now is the cost of adding those book boxes so they match all the rest of the desks in the school. Um, and Ryan, the head custodian at Johnson, actually reached out directly to Paragon, who is the manufacturer of the desks, to get a price I'm waiting to see what Red Thread comes up with as a price as well, um, but it's, it's the second part of that invoice that we have to resolve is to get book boxes installed on those 40 new desks. So chairs, desks, still in the works. Um, no recommendation to, to obviously to pay that invoice, um, and Red Thread is working on it. Okay, so we'll Thank continue you. to hold. We'll hold the invoice. Yeah, and they're aware we're, we're holding it. They're aware and they're aware that you know they've got to work through the issue first. And okay. and Gerilyn, they completed all the other repairs that they needed to do, right? So I wish Terry were still on. I'm not sure because Terry was working on that sort of independently of okay. um, of everybody else. Um, she you mean replacing the deals. desktops? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's not and, done and yet. Not done yet. Wow. No, apparently the uh, technician who was supposed to do that got COVID and has been sick. So we are following up to try to get a date of when those repairs will be made, but they're not done yet. And I will say, Joe, part of the delay in, the, in those tops, they were originally supposed to come in in February, but I know from talking to Terry, they actually were able to, I think, order desktops that are writable, that have a different surface on them. So. They're actually replace. I think they're replacing them with a better, different top. So okay. just for your. Um, That's good um, to know. Thank you. Terry made some sort of deal on the side on her own, you know, which was great, you know, to get to get a better product. So good. Okay. All right, and we'll keep checking on it. So um, another thing that um, Carolyn and Vinny will have to be keeping keeping in touch about. All right, so any other questions or stuff from school people for school people before we say thank you to Bob and Jen and Joe Collada and Ken. Um, so Joe and Ken and STV will keep us posted. I think Bob might wanna be a part of um, 
seeing what happens when we start looking at the whole water control area. So um, we'll make sure Bob's in on that too. And I noticed too that um, anybody that's sending invoices, so Perkins Eastman, I know you email stuff and I know you do hard copies. And so you might need to ch change from Terry to Jen. Okay. Have your Thank you. accounting folks do that. Cause I noticed that Terry's emails on here and then it goes somewhere. I don't, I think it may also go to Gerald. I'm not sure. It just, they, end they up do with my, okay. We'll make so, wow. so um, Vin is now on the email distribution list so we can get his STV email okay. address and um, we're getting him set up for the shared drive too, which was kind of Kathy's yeah. figuring that out with um, Nick and IT. So we'll get that done. All right. So um, some of us before the next meeting may be hanging out and watching water flow in different directions or figuring out what direction it's supposed to flow in. Um, otherwise, our next meeting is in August, I believe, on um, August 10th. 10th, yes. Then you'll get the usual announcement, et cetera. Um, so school phones, folks, thank you. Everyone else has got to stick around because we have to talk about uh, some good news. All right, thank you. Bye. So, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Good night, everyone. Thanks, hey, Ken. Bob, Bob, I'll be in touch with you about that project. Oh, very good. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so next on the agenda is our police station training range. And I hope everybody got my texts and emails. Oh, I forgot, Kathy. I'm sorry, Kathy. I forgot to text you last night. <laughs> <laughs> so the referendum passed and we now have two, three, four, five, six, five. We still have five. Okay. I want to make sure I was just making sure we still had a quorum, but we got Bob Durkin on too. Um, so the referendum passed. It passed by a good amount. Um, there still are a lot of no votes, but those are the people who vote no on everything. I think. But we have the 1.4 million to work with. We've had the discussions about the budget and knowing that we're not going to need that amount. Um, however, our next step is, as we had discussed, um, and now we're going to see if about making it a reality, um, looking at having um, Downs Construction be our construction manager. And Geraldine, do you want to jump in? And <laughs> well, I, well, I wanted to back up. So is the referendum result official? And can I speak with Brad tomorrow about, or Sebi, about getting that purchase order issued to Action Target. So the referendum results are, results are official and I sent unofficial to most of the texts and emails and everything just because I was getting them. Okay. And um, I know that the registrars tested the tabulators for the primary today. So there's, unless we hand count so they everything. Yeah. The only reason that they would not, they would need to be contested is if it were much closer and we need to do a recount and there's no need to do a recount. It was, you know, you know, 60% at least higher than, and it's one, one and a half, one half of 1% to do a recount. So there's not, nothing else I think that needs to be done to make it official. Um, so there wouldn't be any issue on finances part with, with issuing that purchase order. There should not be. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk to them tomorrow and make sure and get that rolling, you know, make sure, because we do want right. to get that out before next we, week. We, we want to do that um, and and, the, and get the process going for that. So if if and if and if the agreement was, because the amount, the action target amount was approved by both the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance prior to the referendum, just to go along with and keep in place action targets amount, which was good till August 1st, which is why we had to hurry the referendum right. through. So I, whether it's a signed contract or a purchase order, I think we need to quickly look into that and find out um, what that step is, because that's the largest chunk. And we need to right. you know, get, that, get that done so um, we can continue to hold that amount. And so you're gonna talk, talk to them tomorrow, talk to whoever you have to talk to tomorrow? Yeah, 
so I'll just I'll find out from Brad or from Sebi what their do they do they just want to sign because I think that there is an agreement within the action target proposal that they could sign, or do they want to issue? I mean, I would suggest they issue a purchase order and attach that proposal, you know, reference that proposal. But I'll work it out with them so that we can we get something to action target to lot. In fact, I'll also talk to action target. The, you know, the referendum was approved. We're processing the you know the purchase order. Um, and make sure that that happens, something happens by the end of this week to, in order to hold that action target price, which was supposed to expire as of next Monday. So right. I'll take care of that. And I kind of, I'm not sure whether finance actually does purchase orders. <laughs> they do. Okay. Kathy says, yes. Well, I know it's not a, it's not a regular thing that they do. They don't like just keep handing them out. They, it's like very specific that once you have the approved amount, they'll do it. Right, Kathy? Yeah, they don't do them all the time, but for something like this, I'm sure they probably would. Okay, so you'll find out. They did for things on the schools. All the all the outside vendors who didn't have a contract form, like all the furniture right. and equipment. F F and E, right? Heard. That's you're right. I remember that. Okay. Whatever it takes to get the action target price agreed to and get them started on you know their fabrication schedule, that's right. what we'll do by the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. So the fabrication so, end of it didn't make me nervous when we talked to them. But what does make me nervous is how quick they can order the the Daikin unit because it's not a project without that. It seemed like a lot well, of stuff then, they fabricate themselves right. when we talked to them that day. Yeah, that's right. But I think that that's... Um, the price will be locked in because it's part of their their proposal and will be part of this purchase order. I think the question is if we if if the if they're under contract on August 1st, what's that date? You know, are we still five are they still within their five months that they need on the mechanical equipment? Are we still within the five months that they need to fabricate their equipment? So are we still targeting January? So as soon as I can get something official out to action target, we'll will nail down that schedule on that date as well. And then it's on them. I mean, that's, you know, then they, they have the contractual obligation to get the equipment and install it. So, so the manufacturer of the, the range specific equipment is on them, but they could, if they needed to, if they felt like they needed to go ahead and buy all that HVAC stuff to get it in, in hand so that if there are cost increases, they've got it right there. It's not gonna, they're not gonna bring it and install it until they install the rest of the stuff. They could get it if they needed to. Yeah. yeah. So, as I said, as I started with, so that's a good point, yeah. Gerald, and I'm glad you brought that up. You'll take care of that. Um, and getting the construction manager on board. And we had talked about this uh, previously that in the budget that Gerald had um, worked up using the budget that Downs put together pro bono for us. Um, in looking at their, they're just their piece, the Downs piece of construction, um, construction management, and Gerilyn did send out uh, both a proposal and a uh, from Downs, and then her um, write up, basically, which we would possibly send to the board of selectmen, but I'm not sure if we need to. So no, yeah, I mean, my. Basically, my assumption at the time was that we were going to have to get approval of the board of selectmen. Right. Which is. So how that was let's look at up. the. Yeah, let's look at the uh, proposal. Well, so you got the proposal part. So this is the, the downs part of the budget, Carolyn had put together, and that we have reviewed in the past. And this is their proposal for just their part, and and this would include construction administration, but it would also include. They're putting together bid packages for, you know, once Chukunsky Humes is completed with their plans, then Downs can put together some bid packages for whichever contractors, electrician, et cetera, that they need to have on, on board to put in that infrastructure. Um, so this would, we would approve this amount first and then Downs would then begin the part where they are doing the next steps. It's my it's my um, assumption, and I kind of asked Matt. I did ask Matt, and didn't get a clear answer, so I'm going to have to ask again. When we approved a lot of other things, once the project funding is approved, we work within that 
structure. The proposals and contracts have to be signed by the first selectman. However, when we made the agreement to hire STV, when we made the agreement to hire STV for the school projects, because STV was hired outside having the funding in place for the firing range, for the training range, that went through the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance. When we made the agreement to hire Rizzo, when we made the agreement to hire STV for school projects, when we made the agreement to hire um, IES as um, commissioning agent, none of that went, had to go through the Board of Selectmen for approval. They select, first selectmen had to sign it, but it didn't have to go for the, through the Board of Selectmen for approval. Again, I will check on this, but um, I'm pretty sure that we haven't done that in the past. I, I would like to be consistent if we're going to do it, but. Um, so this is uh, what the Downs proposal is. And then um, Geraldine did a whole narrative so that if it has to go to the board, it's like that it can. Um, so I, I'm actually gonna make a motion so we can discuss it. That might be the best thing to do. So I'm gonna make a motion that we approve uh, the Downs Construction Company proposal for construction management of the um, police station training range in the amount of $44,819. So I got a second from, I think that's John Perna. And so discussion. Anything, questions? So I have a question. John Mendy, at, go ahead. At what point, once Downs receives bids from various contractors, do we have authority to say, we may not want that contractor to do the job without mentioning anybody's names or contractors' names that we've had some issues with in the past, the $2,500 change order every time you put a light bulb in someplace, for example, yeah. um, how do we how do we say we want somebody else? I mean, do so, what, how far does our legal authority go with that? Or, or how far can we go with that? Well, first of all, we've made Downs aware of some of the um, subcontractor interactions that we've had subsequent to the to the police uh, station, you know, with the school, they're aware of our preference. Um, I will say that on their cost estimate for this project, they, and I'll, I mean, I won't dance around it. They went back to Ferguson. Ferguson was the electrician on this project. Ferguson was the problem electrician on the schools. Um, they did get a price. They did go back to Ferguson in order to get a price for that cost estimate. Because going back to the original subcontractors made sense at the time. They're most familiar with the job. They could quickly give them something, a free idea of what it would cost, right? But Downs is aware of the preference for subcontractors going forward. And even if it weren't for that, we've also made them aware that we would prefer that they not pursue union contractors for this small of a job because it's just going to increase the cost of the cost of the work going forward. In terms of process, um, Downs will have to put it out to bid. The town does have an interest in having all those subcontractor packages bid publicly and competitively. But at the point where they have, where all the bids are due and they have tabulated all the bids and at, done a first glance scope review of who's a responsible um, you know, qualified bidder, they will bring that tabulation to the building committee so whether it's three or five or how many prices they, you know, they received for particular trade um, line items, that at that point, the town through the building committee would have the opportunity to um, say yes or no to certain subcontractors. Um, you know, I will say that this, this project is so small, I don't know that it's going to rise to a lot of people's, uh, um, you know, rise to, I don't think people are going to really pay a lot of attention to it or, or notice what's going on. Um, but on other projects, if you disqualify or eliminate the lowest bidder, you need to have a reason. It doesn't always have to be, you know, a great reason, but you have to be able to document something if, when you've eliminated a low bidder. Um, so, uh, 
So to answer your, your actual question, there will be an opportunity to weigh in. You will have to consider the, you know, the wiseness of eliminating certain, certain bidders, but um, I think Downs will work with us on that. All right. Yeah, it's just, you know, we've gotten burnt twice from the police station yeah. project and from the school project. And, you know, I really don't want to see a, a, a third burn. Well, I think, I think to Geraldine's point though, this, this is a very small project. Yeah, I understand. I think what we have to do though is, is lean on downs. There's a lot of local smaller contractors right here in the Danbury area that this is a piece of cake job. And quite honestly, the bigger guys that are a lot farther away won't be able to compete against the smaller contractors that are one town over, say in Danbury, mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, maybe there's a couple in Bethel, um, you know, that'll bid it, bid it. I know myself, I could think of three off the top of my head that this would fit in their wheelhouse, you know, perfect. And, and they're in Danbury. Yeah, I agree. And I think that one way we can do that, I was going over uh, um, the state's list of, you know, certified MBE and um, SBE um, contracting firms. I think one way that we can accomplish that is to include in the RFP a preference for um, MBE or, or SBE um, firms, and then we'll, we'll get those smaller firms uh, and downs can generate interest in that, you know, in that direction. That sounds good. Yeah. So does this have to be prevailing wage? Shouldn't be. Yeah. 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 If it's over a hundred thousand. It has to be over. It has to be Connecticut yeah. prevailing wage. So it has to be the, the, the price of the total project. It has to be prevailing wage. But right. so that's, All that might, that. yeah. So that might not, that might kind of have some people not as interested because they don't want to do the paperwork, but if they've done, even smaller prevailing wage jobs, they know the paperwork involved, they can do it. It could be not a big issue. Sure. Yep, okay. Any other questions, comments, et cetera, on this motion that's before us? Shall we vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, 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 everybody else is good. Dave, John Perna. Yep. Where'd Durkin go? Durkin says yes. Okay. I don't know. He's there sometimes. He's not. There you are. <laughs> you're, you're good. You're voting yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. I got no video on mine. Just making sure. Okay. So yeah, that. You'll confirm with Matt whether this needs to go before them or whether he can just sign off on their the contract. On a, on, you know, yes, on an agreement so, with them. Okay. Right. So what I did was um, I did ask him, and he said, "Well, I think I yes, of course." And I then I went back because I don't remember doing it for any of the larger parts of the school project. Yes, they did have to do Perkins Eastman because that was outside the funding being approved. Once the funding was being approved was approved, we had to work with inside the funding. So I went back, I didn't go way back to the police station, but I went back to um, using the shared drive and your nice organized stuff and found the Rizzo contract and when it was dated and signed and found the STV contract and when it was dated and signed. And then I went back three months in either direction of that signature date at the board of selectmen minutes and didn't find any motion to approve any of that. But I will check again, Matt is on vacation, but I'm sure he's checking emails. Um, I'm not sure how he's how long he's away, I'll find out from Rich. But I know he's he actually voted absentee, so I knew he was gonna be gone this week. Um, so I'll find out. I, he checks emails when he's on vacation and answers things when he needs to. And I think just to kind of follow up, I mean, the reason that I developed that narrative addressing addressing the Board of Selectmen was because at a Board of Selectmen meeting, Rich, I think it was Rich, was the one that said, oh, we definitely don't want to issue any bid waivers. 
Right. So it's not really a bid waiver because we're under the $50,000 threshold, but I think that there may need to be some courtesy notification to the Board of Selectmen right. that we're moving in this manner because right. we had, we had discussed at a couple of meetings with them, but not ever brought it to a, a definite proposal. Right. And part of the reason we were talking about doing this was, again, kind of initially keeping the amount under the uh, 1 million and thinking we were going to have to go to a town meeting, we could get better prices together if we had downs on board to, you know, do some professional cost estimates, et cetera. So it was like all that stuff going round and round. Then we finally got to the place where, yeah, we're going to be over a million. We might as well kind of accept it, had to do the referendum. Now the funding's been approved. I, I could be at the board of select meeting on the second, if they're having a meeting and, um, just say, for your information, this is what we've done. And yeah, yeah. but we can, we'll figure that out before then. Okay. You, and I can, you and me and Vinny can figure it out. What yeah. We can do, so. the, the advantage here is that Downs wants to bid this immediately in order to lock in procurement and pricing on all the subs and all the equipment that are part of the construction package. So they understand that the work's not really going to be done until January or February, but they feel strongly about locking in the pricing and also getting in before any winter weather to do any preliminary construction work. So, you know, those are the reasons to skip the bidding of the, of the construction manager because we have the best choice already on board and it'll save us some time and money, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Cause once okay. I'm, I'm now the referendums, official and done. I think that Downs can um, be more in touch with Chukunsky Humes and Chukunsky Humes can be more in touch with Action Target and they can all be talking and seeing what final things do they need to verify so that Chukunsky Humes can complete their construction documents and get them to and Downs to get their part done. And in fact, they pretty much have. So Chukunsky Humes has completed their documents They've completed construction. Um, they obviously have been waiting to submit them to Action Target until Action Target was officially on board. But if Action Target takes a look at them and doesn't have any, doesn't you know, there are if there are no coordination issues, there's no changes to be made. So Kunsky Humes will be, and then we'll just take the the Action Target drawings to completion. Um, and while they're doing that, those drawings from Jakunski Humes can be used by Downs to bid. So Downs is going to need a little time, obviously, to package, to, to divide it up, package the trade, you know, the trade packages, um, and get the bidding out. So that would be right. the next step. Yeah. So, um, and it's possible though, instead of waiting until later to get some of the um, construction work done, there could be some electrical stuff being run. Um, the support structures that have to be done. A lot of that could be done. Right. There is some that needs to be done before Action Target installs right. their equipment. So that can yeah. be done at any time now between, you know, signing the, the GMT and, and when the Action Target equipment is delivered. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. So anything more on this part or should we, we have two invoices that we have to deal with. We do have two invoices, yep. So we can do those and that might be it. So we have a Chikunsky Humes invoice that got it the day after our last meeting. Um, so I'll make yeah. a motion that we approve Chikunsky Humes invoice number 22228 um, for the firing range in the amount of $14,000. Second. John seconds. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. And then STV. I'll make a motion that we approve STV invoice number 9002515 um, in the amount for the firing range in the amount of $4,483.50. Second. Second. John, John Menti second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty then. Um, so anything else? Any questions on the firing ant range? Anything else anybody needs to know? 
going to say goodbye to Geraldine. Mm. Well, she might have to come to the board. It's like, okay, but we'll so say, after hey, we buddy. pay this invoice tonight to, to come to Hume's, what is the balance? Is that the one at the bottom at completion? Yeah, yep, the um, 13.5. All right, that's when yep. we're one hundred percent done. Yep. Yeah. Right. They their their note on that invoice is that this covers ninety percent of the of ninety percent progress on the construction documents. So a little bit more money to finish up the drawings, and then the balance of that would be their administration, their construction administration. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, so. I guess Bob Dirk and Vinny and Geraldine, we kind of can say thanks to you guys. Thank you, Geraldine, for we would have been drowning in the school project without your guidance and, and input. So, um, well, as I promised Nancy, Vin will continue to keep Rizzo under on a short leash and um, especially get this site work re resolved. Um, and and make sure that they follow through with sunburst on the uh, on you know on the other site work and then we'll be done. Yeah. Well, Geraldine, congratulations, well deserved. God bless you, kiddo. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. And if you ever you make your way out to Reno, Nevada, look me up. <laughs> Great. Good yeah. To you. So you, yeah. So, yep. Yeah, thank again. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, you know, and in a way, the school project should have been done a whole year ago, and then you would have had less angst probably about yeah. finishing things up. But um, yeah. we're in, we're in Vinny's capable hands now. And and Vinny, yeah. I see it. You say Vinny there, so I guess we call you Vinny. That's good. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Call me anything you want. No, no was, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Be careful, Vinny. Be careful. <laughs> Vinny, where did you work before SDV? I was with MBP um, out of the DC office, the Virginia office, and I was at the National Institute of Health, um, wow. building out a building out a big project there for them. Uh, moved back up here to New England. I'm originally from Rhode Island, and. Uh, Moved back up here for uh, my grandkids. Be closer That's to my great. grandkids. Nice. Yeah. Good. Well. Well. I shouldn't say I moved back up here. I I, I followed my wife back. There you go. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> the most expensive part of the country. There you go. Yeah. Well, welcome, but, Vinny, and um, you know we look forward to working with you a little bit more. Yeah. And um, so Bob, Vinny, and Geraldine, we're I think finished with training range. The other four of you, I just have to give you an update. On a couple things, right, you can stay around everybody. if you want to. If you can stay around <laughs> if you want to hear the last part, but um, we don't have much more for you guys. So, All right. uh, the municipal okay. center renovation, um, uh, BMP is in the process of getting their um, uh, permit. So, and the permit is um, can't say it's being held up. It's run into the health department and. <laughs> Because of the because of the um, testing that we did previous to even getting the whole thing started, we have great information. But at the same time, Laura needs more specific stuff that Jay Metcalf from BMP is putting together. Basically, she wants to know before the permit is issued who the it's basically just the lead baseboard. Who the contractor is going to be and what their plan is and. I was working, actually worked the referendum yesterday and saw her talking with Eileen and they were going over to the lobby. So I went out there to talk to them too. And, um, you know, we explained how the whole area is going to be sealed. They're closing the doors and everything's sealed. The only door that Jay Metcalf explained that, and it's in his, um, in their contract and their proposal that was signed by the town. The only door in and out is going to be that entry door, which will get replaced eventually, but that's what they'll go in and out. They'll have a dumpster out there um, or adjacent to that area somewhere, but everything else will be sealed. Laura seemed to be pleased hearing that. And Jay's going to put some stuff together. Basically, Jay will put together what Laura needs and then she'll sign off and they'll have the permit. They're looking at a projected starting um, time of September. I kind of hope they were going to start at the beginning of this 
months, but here we are almost in August. They will be starting in September. So that's where we are with that. And I, I think when we're a little further along, Jay will come on and give us an update and he'll be probably not on every meeting, but whenever he presents an application for payment, because we probably have questions, he'll be on to answer some of the questions. So we don't have to do anything with that right now. Jay's taking care of what, what needs to be done to get all that information in place. Anything else from anybody else? So everybody say happy birthday to Kathy, which will be next week, but. Happy birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday, Kathy. Are we getting invited over for cake? Well, you can come to uh, Maine because I'm going to be hiking nine mountains. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so if you want to celebrate Kathy's birthday, you got to go to Maine and hike a bunch of mountains. Can I wait yeah. at the bottom with a bottle of wine and cheese? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a big one. It's the six zero. So, you know. Wow. Good for you. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's the plan. So, by the way, on that note, is just uh, for the agenda. Well, I'll talk to you at the end, Nancy, about that. Okay. All right. We'll figure but it Mike, out. Mike yeah. might not go out till Monday. So don't okay. panic. Mark your That'll calendars. <laughs> yeah, we will. We will have a meeting on the tenth, but you might not get the um, agenda till the eighth because Kathy will be dragging herself back from hiking all those mountains and getting back into work. Awesome. Maybe. <laughs> I can make a motion to adjourn. Something to say. <laughs> so John Menti made a motion to adjourn. Dave Olson seconded. John Perna, you didn't hear it because you were talking. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Happy everyone. Birthday, Take care, everybody. Thank Happy you. Birthday, Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. See you all.